Welcome back to the Author's Lounge. My name is Cheryl Mays and I am your host. And I am so excited to bring to you another author that is going to share their work of art with you and the thing that inspired them to put those words to print. And today we have Shelly Lee, who is the author of God Spoke and I Listen. Shelly is a, she enjoys reading and writing and spending time with her family. And, you know, she has a desire to have a closer walk with God, to continuously work on herself and to help others. So, hey, Shelly, how are you today? Hi, how are you? I'm fine. Great. I'm doing good. I'm so glad we have this opportunity to chat so that you can tell us more about this this book that you've written, where it came from, and all of that good stuff. But before we get there, tell us about you. Okay, my name is Shelly. I was born in Pierce County, Washington. I have been in Texas since the age of eight years old. Um, I graduated from Newton High School. Currently, I am a proud, I am proud parent of two young adults. My daughter is 27, my son is 25. I have been at my current job for 16 years. And I just, and I'm just a, you know how they say jack of all trades. I'm a woman of all trades. I dibble and dabble in this and that. I do enjoy reading. I do enjoy writing and spending time with my family. You know, so your, your kids are at an age where they can actually read what you write now. They don't care. <laughs> <laughs> they, they just want to see the sales and the money come in. Like, mom, so how much do we make? Can I go get something, right? Right, right. <laughs> Young adults. <laughs> there you go. So so tell me this. Um, you, you're you a preacher's daughter. Yes, ma'am. And so it, back in the day, we used to call them, we used to call you guys PKs. Right. right? Definitely. <laughs> yes. And so because this book, and we'll talk about the book a little later in the interview, <laughs> Because this book is based on you listening to God's messages, how did this start with you? Did it start from you because you were a PK and you've been just around the gospel for so so long in your younger years? How did this come to develop into what it is today? Well, growing up, we were in and around the church. Every time the doors opened, we were there. Um, my dad, he wasn't around at that time. That's another question later on. So mm -hmm. that's how uh, we'll talk about that in another at another point. But my grandmother was a pianist. My grandmother was a Sunday school teacher, this, that, and the other. My mom was in the church. We were in the choir. So it's like church, 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 church. So that's how I got that foundation. But as I was in school, I enjoyed writing. All the students would come to me, can you help me with my paper? All this and that. And I would help them with their paper. And my um, teachers would tell me I was a good writer also. So then fast forward to college, college came around and I was writing my papers and whatnot. And they were like, you're a good writer. And I was getting A's. And so in between all that, I had a book, a whole bunch of tablets that I had different messages in. Some of the tablets were sermons that I learned from church. And some of those just words that I just felt like God was speaking to me and thoughts that I wrote down. So in 2015, all those tablets, those messages, those sermons, God said, it's time to put it on paper. And that's how God spoke and our listening came about. You know, it, you also talk about in your book, that you learned self-love through an experience that you had with a relationship. And, and that plays a part of what you talk about in the book. Right. So can you tell us a little bit about how that, because that was like a transitioning moment for you. Okay. So I was in a relationship with this guy and this guy, he, um, he did have a substance abuse problem, but in the midst of his substance abuse, abuse problem, he, Basically, instead of getting the, the camera off of him on him to keep the camera off him, he tried to put it on me. So he like I had gave him given him two children and it got to the point where I got big. I got 
healthy, curvy, curvaceous, the whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. And so he was talking about my weight here and there often. And it got to the point where I started feeling like, okay, I'm not worth it. I need to lose this weight. So I started taking uh, the apple cider vinegar pills. And I thought that I was taking them correctly. And I would take them faithfully every day kind of cut back on what I was eating and just keep going forward with my life. So one day my uh, pastor's wife came and picked us up for service and I was shaking. My hands were just shaking. She was talking to me. She said my body was shaking. I didn't even know that I was shaking. And she said, uh, Sister Lee, what have you been doing? She's that type of woman that get all in your business. Love her to death, but she'll get all in your business. She said, what have you been doing? I said, nothing. She said, why are you shaking? I said, I didn't realize I was shaking. And so she said, what, have you been taking something? And I explained to her that I was taking the apple cider vinegar pills for my weight. And she told me to stop. Don't take them anymore. And once I did stop taking those pills, uh, the shaking and stuff stopped, but I had to realize I'm worth it. I'm worth being loved. And I don't need a man to validate me. All of that matters is how I feel about myself and what God says. You know, you know I love that story and the fact that you share it yes. because oftentimes we do have other people. We want other people to validate us. Right. And we want other people to you know, lift us up and tell us these things that we should be really telling ourselves. Definitely. And so when you got to the point of saying, okay, I'm done, no more. Yes. What was that? What was that moment like? Freedom, mm -hmm. freedom, nothing holding me down, just freedom, knowing that I can validate my own self. And that's how I was kind of talking about, you know, as little girls, we need a father, either your father or father figure in your life. And you'll get that validation and you won't seek that from a man because you'll already know I'm loved. I'm smart. I'm beautiful. I can do all things. You would know all that. So basically due to me not having that, then I had to depend on God for that. And that dependence, that shift where you said, you know, my strength comes from the Lord. Right. And now that is who I am going to focus on. That changed things for you. Yes. Especially as a single mom. Yes, ma'am. And so for people that are listening to this and watching this, and I want to get into the book because all of this correlates <clears throat> to what you put into the book. But before we get there, for people that are watching this and they might have a similar situation going on, where they are, you know, they're feeling they, their self-esteem is down. They're not really trusting themselves to when they look in the mirror and know that they are worthy of love. What advice would you give them? Um, the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. That's first and foremost. So God is already telling you, you're the bomb, you're it. You are missing it. You are the thing. And it takes you to get in that mirror and look at yourself and believe it. As I look at my face, I, I'm decorated with moles. I'm decorated with freckles, but I'm cute. And so with me having that confidence in myself, you can have that confidence in yourself and keep improving yourself. If there's things that you don't like, start trying to, you know, I'm not saying have all kind of plastic surgery and things like that, unless that's what you want to do, but love who you are because you got to love yourself first before you can really love someone else. Yeah. That, that right there, right. That hit it is that you do have to love yourself first before you can actually love others. Cause you gotta know what love is. Right. You gotta know what it feels like. Right. Before you can put that on others. Thank you so much for sharing that piece with us. Cause I know that's your personal story. Yes, ma'am. And guys, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go to a break, but listen, we're gonna talk about the book, God Spoke and I Listened by Shelly Lee. And so I want you to come back and join us. Welcome back to the Author's Lounge. I am having a conversation with author Shelly Lee. She's the author of God Spoke and I Listened. And Shelly, we were talking about your experience that actually got you to this place of putting these words to paper. And so now we know that you, you actually got through this through an experience of your own about learning self-love 
and then listening to the messages that you had written down for years yes. in a tab with the messages that you've been receiving from God. And then finally, his instructions of now's the time. The time is now for you to do this. And so tell us about the book. God spoke and I listened. So first of all, tell us about the title. God spoke and I listened. So, you know, throughout the Bible, God is telling somebody to do something. Get up, arise, get out your bed, go, go to this land, go to this, that land. Don't do this, don't do that. You know, he's speaking throughout his word, telling different um, prophets or different ordinary women and men to go and do something. So when I was, I had, he had already, the way he deals with me, he already had given me the name, um, of the title of the book long before I even started writing the book. And so with that being said, God Spoke and I Listen was the appropriate title because that's the title that he given to me, he had gave to me. The cover, I kind of collaborated with my daughter where she has like the, I'm not a visionary, I can't imagine things, I'm not the de decorative and things like that. So she kind of, I was talking to her and she kind of told me what the title, what the cover should look like. And from there, I consulted someone and it came into fruition. I love it. I love it. So even though she didn't read the book, she still played a role in it. Like, no mom, yes. this is what you need to do. Definitely. <laughs> and so now tell us about the book. So a person gets to this book, God spoke and I listened. What is it that they're going to read about? So in my life, I went through different things where one chapter was feeling like I'm at the bottom. You know how sometimes you feel like life is passing you by. Everyone mm -hmm. is climbing to the top and you're just still in that pit. So it's like I'm at the bottom now, but I'll be on top later. And that kind of tells about Joseph being in the pit. Yeah, it was Joseph. Yeah, Joseph being in the pit and how God lifted him up and he became like the basically the king of that whole land. Another one was about relationships. You know, we all, with well, some of us, want to be married and live a, you know, a life with someone who loves us and we love each other back. So a lot of my friends and whatnot were getting married. Even people that had babysat were getting married. I'm like, okay, Lord, when is it my time? So the book is basically about things that I experienced and how God gave me a word to go to those, go to the scripture to see how to resolve that situation. So if you feel in unloved, for God so loved the world, so he loves you. So each and everything that I encounter is it's a testimony of the things I encountered and how, how God helped me overcome. You know what I love about um, books like this is when you share your personal stories. Yes. And it's become, when you write it out, it's more, it's therapeutic. Right. It's like, it's, a, it's another healing to you because you heal like the first time in order to say, okay, I'm going to put this to paper. And then the second time you put it to paper, now you got to reread it. Right. And that's what I do. I'll go back and reread some things. If I'm encountering that same feeling, I'll go back and read it. Tears stream down my eyes. I'm like, okay, Lord, I know you're still with me. I know this is still true today. You know, the, the other thing about that is when people tell those stories like that is really helping other people who have remained silent. Right. Because you overcome by your testimony. So somebody is sitting there wondering, OK, Lord, how am I going to feed my kids? How am I going to you know, get this job? It, it's a word. It's a word there for you. And he will help you through it. If he did it for me, he could do it for you. And that right there, that that's it. Right. That is the that's the, the important like that could really be a T-shirt. Right. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Right. Um, and so you also spend a lot of time helping others. Yes, ma'am. And so where, where does that come from? I don't really know. <laughs> I have no clue. I'm growing up. I was an independent child. I did watch my mother. My mother was also a single parent. I was an independent child. I kind of watched her. She held so many different jobs and whatnot. She took care of the kids. I helped her take care of the younger siblings, um, went off to college. I had to learn how to 
be by myself and learn how to conduct business as a young adult. Then from there, um, helping people get jobs, I would help people fill out their resumes. I learned how to do taxes, simple taxes at that. Just all kind of talents that God has bestowed me with that I'm trying to narrow down to one thing. My dream has always been to do like a one woman shop. This woman, she can come in, she can find jobs. There's my inspirational books that I wrote to read, um, help her, you know, get her business straight so she can have, you know, raise her kids. Just, he just, and he just endowed me with a lot that I want to share with others. And this book is one of those things. Yes, ma'am. This book is going to, you know, just thinking about helping others, this book is going to reach the masses. I am praying that it does. And yeah, I, I, I feel it. I feel like this book is going to reach the masses. And as people read it, they're going to see their own stories in it. Yes, ma'am. And they're going to be able to resonate with their story and see how you overcame it. So let me ask you this. In the book, what is one of the, the most pivotal moments that you share in the book? The pivotal was the first chapter. It's called, wait, hold on. Here is the book, by the way. I got to show y'all. I love it. This is my baby. God spoke and I listened. This is the back cover. The first message, uh, the message that resonates with me, uh, hold on, is have you done your laundry? That was the first time I ever heard God speak to me. That was the first message he ever gave to me. That's That message was dearly to me because, you know, you go to church and the preacher says, God told me, and the missionary says, God said, and you're like, okay, did God really speak to these people? Or are they just, you know, just trying to, you know, tell me tales? So I would wonder off and on through my uh, adulthood, what does God say? How does God, how do you know when God is speaking? So it happened to be one night I was landing in bed and I heard, I heard a still small voice. Most people describe his voice as a still small voice and talking to me about laundry and different stuff. And I'm like, okay, okay. You know, I'm trying to go to sleep. So it got to the point where he continued to talk and I said, okay, Lord, if this is you, when I wake up in the morning, I want to remember everything that you told me. And do you know I remembered everything? And that's my first message of the book, Have You Done Your Laundry? And it talks about how God, you know, how we do the laundry and God washes us also. Clean. Wow. For sure. That's awesome. I love that. You know, and, and I love that as, a, as the beginning. Yes. Because there's so much impact in do your laundry. Yes. I just like, let's get rid of all this dirt, all of this right. stuff that holds us back, that stops us from feeling clean. And, you know, there's so many interpretations that can go into that. Yep. Um, you know, when you say it and you actually apply it to scripture, there's just so much that is in that first section there. And so I guess that right there, that's going to be that piece that grabs you. So listen, if you are looking for a, a amazing read, inspiration or this is christian inspiration yes and if you're looking for something to lift you up to help you feel better about what you're doing and about your life sometimes you need stories of people that have overcome and so i thank you for that and we are going to a break and we're going to come back because you got some other stuff going on it doesn't end with this book that's so right. you definitely want to come back and join us in a few moments. Matter of fact, just stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Welcome back. My name is Cheryl Mays and I'm your host and I am talking with Shelly Lee. Shelly Lee is the author of God Spoke and I Listen. And we have been talking about her experiences that led up to writing the book. Then what the book is about itself. And I'll tell you, this is going to be an inspirational read for you. And I am sure it's going to be something you want to read over and over and over again. And so, Shelly, you're not done because you got another book. Yes, ma'am. And, I, and I have to ask you this, though, because I want you to tell us about the other book. But is there something significant about August the 2nd? Because yes. both books were published on August the 2nd. 
for some reason, that's the publishing date that they both came out within a year of each other. I have no clue why why it came like that, but that's just the way it was published. So the second book is called The Shelter Series. And there, there would be at least six books in this series. And it's all based on the theme of love. We all want love. We all want to give love. We all need love. We all want to receive love. And God is love. So that book is about an unknown love. I say it, it's an unknown love because I grew up with my without my dad in the home. And so this book chronicles how I felt as a child to adulthood and what happened the first time he and I met face to face. So it is a good read. I don't hold back. Someone read the book and said I seem like an angry black woman, but I was angry. So mm. I express my feelings and it's a wonderful read and it is written in honor of my dad who is deceased. Okay. And so now there is also going to be volume two, volume, well, you said there's going to be six. Yes. Uh, the next one would be uh, First Love. Mm -hmm. uh, the next one would be A Crazy Love, uh, An Addictive Love, and it goes like that. And it's inspired by events in my life. Wow. You've been through a lot. You've got a lot of story in you, lady. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> so now... Let me ask you this. So for this book that um, the second book, the Shelter series, as it goes through episodes in your life, anywhere in there, are you at a point where you are just so content with where your life is that that's going to be one of the series for Sheldra? Yes. You're, you're getting ahead of the game. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, I'm spilling it. I'm spilling the tea. You are. Sheldra will end eventually, but you are so you are so right. That is one of them. I don't have the title just yet, but he kind of already gave me the input and everything. So yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, you, you, you're That's getting ahead of me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. Not only that, you're looking at putting together some courses. Yes. Um, a lot of people want to learn how to write books and self-publish mm -hmm. and things like that. So perhaps if they don't want me, I'm a book coach. So if they don't want my book coaching, maybe they could do the, do the course and it'll be a do-it-yourself course. And I'll tell them from A to Z everything that they need to know. And they can do it at their own pace, but, you know, within reason, because it only takes three months to do a book. Really and truly, I people write one in a day, but that's like ebooks and things like that. So it just depends. But uh, I want to present some courses about writing and self-publishing and get that out. In addition to my um, third book is let me encourage you to pray, believe, no, pray, wait, no, pray, believe and wait. That's coming out uh, real soon this month. Okay, not August the 2nd. No, this would be this month or the beginning of February. And it's just oh, encouraging right. single parents, it's encouraging business people and things like that. And then I share another personal story in that book of how I had to pray, believe and wait. You know, I think that is where we are today and, <clears throat> and, and every day. I just think about, you know, in my life, it's pray, believe and then wait. Yeah. You know, um, but while you're waiting, do something right to keep you moving forward. Um, you know, let me ask you this: What's the greatest piece of advice that you were given as an author? I will tell you that that piece of advice did come from my dad. He said, "Grow close, grow closer to the Lord daily." So every day that you wake up on this side of God's green earth, seek God out. He has things in store for you and you won't know it unless you have a daily walk with him. So grow close to the Lord daily. And my personal one is without God, it cannot be done. I love that. Um, and oftentimes authors, when you find that you are at a, a point where you're like, I, I can't even think of the next word to the sentence, or I can't think of the next chapter or what order it should be in. That is great advice to just kind of, you know, sit for a moment mm -hmm. and, and let it come to you, which right. is something that we don't always do. We always want to, you know, be in charge. Mm -hmm. 
right? We want to be in yes, charge sir. of our results. We want to be in charge of everything that happens. And you know, what do they say, right? If you want to see God laugh, make plans. <laughs> That's a good one. I hadn't heard that one before, but I like that. <laughs> Because he's gonna change them all up. Exactly, right? And go, no, that's that's not what I want you to do. Yeah. <laughs> Got it. So now let me ask you this. If you could have um dinner or lunch with anyone in the world, <laughs> you pick someone that we all know very well. Yes. And tell me who and why. Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is my favorite actor. I love his plays. I love his books. I love his TV shows. He ministers, his shows ministers to me as a single woman. And that's where he has his um, his favorite point. He reaches out to single women at different stages of their lives. And it just, I, I, I put a stamp on anything he does. I would love to have dinner with him and just maybe collaborate with him one day, God willing. And let me ask you this. So what, what one question would you ask him? Can we work together? <laughs> God spoke, I listened. Can we work together? Yes. That's what he told me to ask you. <laughs> yes. Can we work together? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Shelly, it has been a pleasure having you here on the Author's Lounge. I am so excited for your books, for what you have coming up in the future. And so if you are also, um, you're also working on not only the books that are coming up and the courses that are coming up, what's, what else is going on in Shelly in her life? Where are you now in your life? Because you've gone through so many experiences. Where are you today? I am content to a point, but at the same time, I know there's more and there's greater coming my way. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to uh, search for that direction. Um, I want to actually stop working a nine to five and actually dedicate my full my dedicate to my business full time, so that I can get the things done that God has in me to do. I love it. Well, I'm sure you're going to do all of that and more. I am Thank sure. You. And I'm so excited that we had this opportunity to share your story with our audiences far and far and far and wide um, to be able to know about Shelly Lee and God spoke. And I listened in the series of the uh, Sheldra series, beginning with the unknown love. And guys, listen you want to get this book and you want to get the series because I know just listening to Shelly that she's touched me already. She has truly touched me already. And some things that, you know, you think about in life where you actually want to know that somebody went through this and they came out on the other end and they are doing so much better. And that's where the title is. God spoke and I listened. And the result is you do better. All right. So thank you for sharing that message with us. Thank you for allowing me. Absolutely. You have an amazing day. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye. Guys, you heard it here on the Author's Lounge. The author, Shelly Lee, the author of God Spoke and I Listened, and also the Sheldra series, An Unknown Love. Get the book. I'll tell you, if you're looking for inspiration, and we all need inspiration, you never know where it's going to come from, but it keeps you going. Check the book out. Follow Shelly. If you're interested in writing a book and you're looking for a coach, check her out. You want to follow people that have already done what you're trying to do. And so you definitely want to do that. And guess what? You want to follow us on the Author's Lounge because you never know who we're going to have. This is the place where authors gather. So come back, check us out, and look at some of the other videos. Look at some of the other episodes of the show. I'm sure you will be amazed at the stories that the authors have shared when they bring to you their inspiration, when they bring to you their motivation, and they share their life stories with you. My name is Cheryl Mays, and I'm your host of the Authors' Lounge, and I look forward to the next time. Until then, keep reading and keep writing.